Virgos, welcome back to my channel. Today is February 21st. I am recording this. Happy Monday, happy Tuesday. This is going to be your love reading for all the Virgos, Virgo Sun, Moon, Rising, or Venus. Please remember some of the messages may or may not resonate. Take what fits, leave the rest. I cannot stress that enough. Okay, if you want to get a personal reading, there's a link in the description box below this video. Click on that link and you will be able to book a discounted reading until February 28th with me. Also, do join the Oversoul community. There's a link below. It's a spiritual community forum I've created and I welcome you all to join. It's free to sign up. Definitely check that out. All right, you guys. Let's see what the drama is here. Every day it's something, right? Lately it's been kind of good. Um, but I feel like there's a very strong message here for somebody. So let's get into this and see what's going on. Make sure you hit like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Help the channel grow. I would greatly appreciate it. And hello everyone in the chat. <laughs> All right. You know, I'm really shuffling here. I want to see what's going on. What's going on for you guys? Love messages for Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, or Venus. Okay, hand of cards. Ooh, Virgo, keeping your hand, your cards close to your chest right now. You're not revealing anything. Some of you are, um, you're taking a big risk here with something in your life, being very strategic about your options or which direction you're hoping to go. Okay, um, some of you, you know, you got your options, you got options in front of you, but you're not showing anything. You're not revealing anything to anyone um, right now. You're kind of, I see you Virgo, <laughs> I see you. You're kind of sitting back and you're like, hmm, let me just see here. Let me just suss things out. You're not saying anything to your friends, or your family, what you got going on when it comes to love and relationships. Um, you're just kind of like, look at you. You're like, hmm, let me see. What hand do I want to play here? Let me see. Hmm. Let me organize my thoughts here. What are my options? What can I do? I see you. Okay. All right. Because you're in separation with someone. Right now you're in separation. And you're being very strategic. Okay. Um, I do feel like somebody is missing you right now. Or is feeling sad. They're thinking about you, Virgo. They're unsure of the future. And why is that? Because you're not revealing anything. You're not saying nothing. You know, it's kind of like you're sitting at the poker table. You got your you got your cards. You know, you get, maybe you get a flush. Maybe you got a full house. And somebody else is sitting across from you. And they don't know what hand what cards you got. And they're they're looking at you. They're looking for signs, Virgo. They're looking for facial movements. Some of you got a, your poker face on in some ways that could be literally or figuratively you know and i feel like you got somebody here who's looking at you like what's virgo gonna do next being very very strategic virgo very strategic while in separation somebody's watching they're looking they're missing you and they're unsure they don't know what what cards you have there in your hand Okay, the runner. Hmm. Runner and a codependent relationship. Fear of intimacy and listening to ego. Okay. So Virgo, you've been in some kind of relationship with someone. It was a codependent connection and this person was the runner. All right. Some of you let that person keep on running. Some of you just said, keep it moving. And you're not telling, you're not chasing, you're not saying anything to anybody. You're you're taking your time now. You're figuring things out. What what hand, what 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 cards are you going to play now? How are you going to handle something? Okay, which is good, because I feel like you're being very strategic to figure out what you're doing. Okay, and while this person ran away, here, thinking that either they were going to run away and find something else, or just run away from the relationship because they were scared. Or their ego took a hold of them that gave you an opportunity 
and I see it giving you an opportunity here. Now you got some you got some quiet time now to figure out your next play. You got your playbook in front of you. You should always have your playbook. <laughs> you always got to have your playbook, Virgo. You always got to figure out what your next move is. Is it a game? Well, life's a game, isn't it? Right? Are you just going through life like a pinball, bouncing off all the bumpers? Is that how you're living your life? Hey, more power to you if that's how you're living your life. But if that's how you're living your life, Virgo, you're just going to keep bumping in and bumping off and bumping in and bumping off and just be completely chaotic and not know what you're doing. you you got to get organized. And I see you. I see you. Being in a position here where now that you're in separation from someone, now you're getting some time to get a little bit of distance and figure out what your next move is going to be. What's the next play? Because, of course, Virgo, you're trying to win this game of life, right? You're trying to be successful. You're trying to have love. You're trying to have a healthy relationship. You want to create and build something in your life, um, your emotional life, your physical life, your intellectual life, and your spiritual life, you know? I see you here now really thinking about things. Let's get a little bit into the reading here and see what's going on. Interesting. It's almost like a blessing that somebody has run away or left a relationship because I feel like for you, this is giving you a little downtime. Now you're not reactive. It's giving you a little downtime to figure out what your, what your next move is and which way you're going to go without any kind of interference. Sometimes... Sometimes that runner situation, just because somebody's running away, that doesn't mean you have to chase. <clears throat> Sometimes you just got to let that person run and stand still, take a look around and say, okay, now they're out of the house right now. Let me see. Am I going to rearrange this furniture? Look, you have the two of cups again. Am I going to rearrange this furniture? Or am I going to move out? What am I going to do? Am I going to bring somebody else to move in? What's my plan? You're looking at your plan. So, two of cups here. All right. I feel as an energy, Virgo, you're in this position right now. While you're in separation with someone, you're meeting yourself halfway at this time. You're providing your own needs. Instead of trying to get somebody or chase somebody to try to fill those needs or meet you halfway, you're meeting, it's the divine, masculine, and feminine aspects of yourself that you are coming into union with right here. This is how I feel, you know, there's a meaning for this card, but the energy that I'm picking up from this is what I'm seeing here, okay? Some of you are having conversation with another person about your plans, trying to get on the same page, um, trying to make maybe come to some kind of agreement or talk to someone about your plans, right? It's a trusted male or female, you know, uh, it, it, you may be asking somebody to move in with you, um, looking for, you know, like a roommate or seeking one. You might be signing some type of contract as well, you know, like an agreement of some sort as well. You might be seeking a new job. Maybe you're going to re relocate to a new position here. Okay, because the two is about partnerships. Twos are about choices. Opposition, reflection, and diversity. All right, so, yep, look at this. And now we have two cups here. Okay, Sagittarius energy with temperance. So you're bringing peace into your life, bringing balance back into your life. But you're in this place now where you're meeting yourself halfway. How am I going to do this now that I have this time? Because this person, listen, the runner in a codependent relationship, if you're not chasing after this person, they're going to come running back to you. And I feel like right now you're preparing for how you're going to handle any kind of return. Because listen. There's an old saying, my boss used to say this all the time, they always come back. They always come back in one way or another. And just because somebody's returning doesn't mean that they're serious. It doesn't not mean that they're serious. But just know, in a codependent relationship, codependency, where there's no mutual 
separation or breakup, that kind of thing. Codependency is addicting, addicting, addictive. And people always return. And you know, Virgo, because when your person at times maybe ran away from you, you chased after them. But some of you are healing those codependent behaviors and you're like, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing it. I'm not going out there and lassoing this person and reeling them back in. Like you're not out there fishing. <laughs> so you're staying right where you are and you're like, okay, I see you. Okay. They ran away again. All right. Here we go. That's fine. Let them go on their little thing. Let them go do their little thing. I'm getting, I'm figuring out my own plans now. I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do. Now for some of you, you could be meeting somebody new in the month of March who has the same energy and you're different with them than you were in your past relationships. You're staying centered. That's what temperance is. Tempering yourself. You're staying centered. You're staying at peace. You're not getting your, you know, feathers ruffled about anyone new that you meet. This person comes in and you start talking and then you have dinner, or drinks, and you meet and all. And then they disappear. They run away. You're, I see you. Okay. Go about your business. Do what you got to do. I'm taking care of myself. But you're not telling anybody anything, really. Like you're just not revealing your cards to everyone. You're building in silence. You're doing what you have to do. And, it, and it's good, good energy. All right. Look at Virgo. You're coming in as the emperor. You're taking the reins in your life at this time, which is really, really, really positive. You're bossing up in more ways than one. You know, I feel like you're in this, you're, you know, masculine or feminine energy or, you know, whatever the energy is. I don't know, binary, non-binary. I, I just don't know all the terms, but it, it, just in general, whatever it is, you're just taking the reins in your own life at this time. You're doing what you need to do for yourself. You're not allowing yourself to be dictated to. If someone's going to run, that doesn't mean that you have to chase you're not reactive. You're acting. You're responding, but you are not reacting, which is really good. And that's how you should be because that's a sign of health, of, of mental and emotional health. Okay. Yep. There's your card, finally. Nine of Pentacles. So there you are. I see. Look at all these cards. You, you have some great stuff happening here. Okay, with the Nine of Pentacles, you're making your own wishes come true. You're doing your own thing. You're independent. You've got your money right. You're open to meeting someone for any kind of new love or trying to. You're 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 remaining open is what I'm saying. If you get asked out on dates, you'll go on them, um, but you're selective, so you may not go on every single one of them but you're selective with who you're going to meet. But keeping it very simple, you're not getting into anything heavy. You're like, yeah, sure, we'll have coffee. Yeah, sure, we'll have a drink or two. Spend some time, get to know each other, that kind of thing. <clears throat> but I've, I feel it's really like, it just feels like you're very much in control now, you know, because you're not, you're not reacting to things. When you, when you react to other people's behaviors, you're then giving other people the power to dictate how you should be. So it's kind of like you're in this live and let live. Hey, go ahead. If you want to separate, you want to run away. See ya, you know, but you're standing centered and in your own spot. You're not leaving the house to go after somebody else, you know, um, but you're not, you're not blocked off from allowing anyone to come into your life either, which is very powerful. It's just, it's just a very de independent energy here with the Nine of Pentacles. Being self-sufficient, focusing on your own self, your solo pleasures, your gains, the things that make you happy now. Let's take a look at this runner. I wanna see what's going on with this runner. What's the deal? 
Why is this person? I mean, it's obvious that the person who runs away from the relationship, or they run away from conf conflict or confrontation, or they get scared, or there's a fear of intimacy. Whether this is a past person or somebody new coming in, you're staying static no matter what. Okay. King of Wands just flew out here. So we have Leo, Sagittarius, Aries energy. All right, let's see. Yeah, this is somebody, I'm going to tell you, new or your past person. This is somebody who is all about themselves. That's really what it is, okay? King of Wands generally comes across as someone who's pretty, like, bold and um, powerful, you know, it's like a leader, takes the lead in relationships. And if they if they want to stay, they stay. And if they don't want to stay, they run or they go or whatever it is. Um, the King of Wands does not come across to me as someone who's very emotional or um, they're, they're maybe more passionate, but this person has a tendency to just go and seek their own wish fulfillment first okay doesn't always make someone selfish but when you're looking to create a bond and a relationship with someone um leaving the relationship is going to starve it and then it will die right so if you've got somebody here who either came into your life or it comes into your life and is all talking about, yeah, let's meet, yeah, let's connect, yeah, I'm looking for um, a long-term commitment or relationship, and then they dip out. I mean, that's someone who's a liar, <laughs> basically. Like if they just run away, you know? I mean, people can say that they want that and then meet somebody and connect and then make the decision, well, no, this doesn't, I, I'm not feeling the vibe, so, but it was nice to meet you and good luck. This is not that person. This person comes in with full intention. And rather than say, um, or rather than have said, if this is a past person, um, you know what, it's not going to work out. I don't want, I, I can't. They just run instead. That's what the Eight of Cups is. The Eight of Cups is withdrawal. And they, or they move on or they abandon the relationship. Okay. And so, you know, that's the energy of somebody coming in for some of you. And it's also the energy of a past person who tends to come in and out of your life. Because the Eight of Cups is also a temporary withdrawal where this person it's like they're on a hunt to collect their cups going out see the cup there up in the sky going out and collecting their ninth cup wish fulfillment and then coming back and storing it up and then going out looking for the tenth one it's like in and out kind of energy it doesn't matter virgo what other people are doing what matters is well at least to me here in your reading is how you are and you're standing firm. You are not getting knocked off the bridge here, which is really positive, I feel, for you. And the good thing is that if this is somebody new, it's nothing to, you know, go home crying about because the Two of Cups is a brand new beginning. It's just like meeting the person and maybe even finding alignment or connection with this person, but it's not deep. So it's not anything that... You're going to get your heart. If you if you meet someone for the first time, go out on a couple of dates, and then they just disappear on you, and you're like in bed for weeks because of it, you got to like get off these tarot card readings and get into some therapy because that is way too much cling, clinginess, okay? Way too much. There's some insecurities or even your own codependency issues that you got to take a look at because people are allowed to say, yeah, let's go on a couple of dates. And then, I mean, come on, you know, you do it yourself. Say, uh, I'm not really picking up the vibe here. I don't feel like, yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying? You go on some dates, you meet somebody, you're like, uh. some people are like, hey, this is great. You, you, People always put people in like kind of a category when they start dating. Okay, this one seems like they're just 
better off just to be a friend. This one's a potential for a love relationship. This one, just no, not having it, you know? Um, if, if you're meeting people constantly and every single one of them is a potential love offer, you might be jumping the gun a little bit. So I feel like you're in a good place here and I feel like you're not really, um, you're just gonna keep, <laughs> I said this the other day, I don't know where the hell I get this term from, because no one in my life ever uses this, but you're just going to keep on trucking. You're just not interested in any kind of shit stain thing in your life. You know, you, you got your Windex, you got your rag, you're cleaning up all the stains in your life, all the spots, whatever was left over. You're, you know, as soon as a new spot comes, you're like, oh, give me the Windex. You're cleaning that up right away. You're keeping yourself so fresh and so clean which is good. All right. All right. Well, there's you showing up in your readings. Now, this could be a, an earth sign as well. You could be connecting with an earth sign. So there's definitely, listen, fire and earth. There is a match, okay? Whether it's a past person or somebody new. There is a match here for sure. And there is potential here, for sure. But I feel like, let's take a look. You know what, I wanna pull, um, I wanna get a clarifying card here. Because I feel like this is you, the Queen of Pentacles, obviously. Let me take a look here. Because I feel like two people here are, are hoping, they're looking for their, their their wish uh, they just told me so you some of you are actually some of the strategy that you got in your mind right now that you're planning is to to leave leave the scene of the crime leave a relationship leave get away from the runner it's not that you're going to stay put and wait for this person to come back i feel like this person's going to try and come back and they're you're not going to be anywhere to be found because you will have like exited stage left right because I, I feel like a lot of you this person ran and you said go ahead you'll be back but you stayed put and and that seems to be like maybe that was the problem and i feel like a lot of you are coming to terms with that right now the fact that you stayed put so that you became like i don't know you installed like a revolving door somewhere on the door hinge then and you're like yeah they're in and out they're in and out and i'm not going to move but i think if that was something that was going on, you were showing a sign of strength. But now I feel part of your strategy here is, no, I'm selling this fucking house. I'm getting the hell out of here. They're going to come back and that door is going to be jammed shut. You know, um, there's no way for this person to come in anymore. I'm not a revolving door. They can't keep coming in and out of my life. If you haven't gotten to that point yet, Virgo, and you keep allowing this person to come back, because something in your your mind either it's either codependency or your heart or your emotions is telling you well maybe this time it'll be different if if you feel like somebody's coming back and this time it could be different just keep that door locked and make them work to get that door open that's all they gotta prove themselves so i feel like a lot of you have been there done that and that's part of your strategy is you're moving on it, the house is getting sold they're not gonna be able to find you you're changing your address you're just getting out of dodge whatever it is but let me just take a look here because there's definitely with this two of wands energy here i really feel like some of you are no longer waiting you're not waiting for the results you're not waiting for these test results to come in and see, like, you're just like, screw it. I'm done. I'm out of here. I'm moving on. Pringle, a single is a Pringle, right? You're making a choice here. Yep, there you go. Right? You've been compromising, Virgo. You have. You've been compromising. Some of you made the decision to compromise and just, you know, okay, well, if you're going to come back in, um, I'm still going to keep you blocked. And I feel like that was, I feel, it's like you were letting this person in the house, but you were 
locking yourself up in the room. You know, you were because the thing is, like, you're still letting them in. You are still letting them in. No, Virgo, if this person keeps running away from because they don't want to deal with the confrontation or they have a fear of intimacy or things like that, that is not your problem, right? And they listen to their ego or their egos, like whatever. That's not your problem. You got to come out of that room and you got to go down them steps and you got to walk out on that front lawn and put that for sale sign on that house and go somewhere else. You got to empty out that house. You know what I mean? Um, and I feel like a lot of you, you made a decision to compromise and it didn't work out for you. And now you're blocking. Now you're just, here you are. Look, you're blocking. You see when those arms are crossed? You ever see somebody who sits with their arms crossed? They're blocking. That's a blocking defensive behavior, physical. So there you are, right? Can't come back in. That's it. And you're not revealing anything here. Let's see this King of Wands. Yep. King of Wands is all about their plans, their projects, their new ideas, you know, their intellectual pursuits. Um, they're very intentional and very strategic with their thinking, but they spend a lot of time up in their head and uh, don't really communicate. It's kind of like all they think about this King of Wands. It could be any sign, obviously, but all this person really thinks about is they're driven towards their thoughts and their ideas and the things that they, their victories and what they want to accomplish in life. So they're telling you that they want a relationship and or they were telling you that and they were just trying to keep you there but they were keeping you there as friends with the two of cups and it just wasn't enough it's just not enough for you so you're not revealing your plans you're not revealing your thoughts here of what your plans are okay one of them is that you're not waiting anymore okay you're making a decision um i'm going to take a look at temperance and the emperor Okay. So we have the King of Cups here. Like I say, King of Cups always shows up in your reading. Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces energy. Um, so if this was your person. Um, if you were dealing with that, you know, water element energy, this person was just trying to keep the peace. This person wasn't trying to have any confrontation um, at all. They were keeping quiet. They were very passive. Okay. And that I feel for some of you, if you were connecting with that person, that passive energy, while passivity is good in certain at, at certain times to be used at certain times, it's not healthy in a relationship all the time. Okay, because it, it produces stagnancy. There's no growth with passivity. It's actually, it's almost considered by some to be a sin. You know, I think it's okay to be passive when you're in the middle of a ballroom, a, a barroom brawl, you know, and you want to get out of the way and keep the peace and you don't want to have any fights or get arrested. But when it comes to relationships, passive energy, like that's like not giving water to your flowers. You know what I mean? Um, because you have to be intentional and take action in order to keep the growth going. So if you were dealing with someone who was extremely passive and just kept running away, it didn't want to have growth or had a fear of intimacy or didn't want to, you know, water those flowers. I feel like a lot of you are just like, hey, this person is not even doing anything. They're not even lifting a finger. So why should I lift a finger for them? Because a lot of you were, a lot of you kept lifting like all your fingers for this person and they were just letting you do whatever um, they needed you to do. And they were using for even some, a lot of passive aggressive behavior, purposely not doing stuff that you needed them or asked them to do. They were purposefully not doing it to get you riled up so they could blame you for why they weren't doing anything and what was your fault that the relationship didn't go anywhere because you demanded too much. You might've even heard that from that person and that's abuse. You know, you ask someone, you know, I, 
for example, some of you might have said in a past relationship, you know, can we just like go out to dinner on Friday nights, you know, have a little time together, we don't see each other that much or whatever, and this person would agree to do it. And then Friday would come and they're nowhere to be found. And then you'd say to them, what happened? Oh, I got busy at work and I meant to call you and I forgot and blah, blah, blah. And so you let it go that one time and, and then the next then you make plans again and then the next time comes the next Friday and then again they they got something else that came up or whatever it is and so now you say something again and now they're getting frustrated with you because you keep bugging them don't you know I'm busy I'm doing my best here and then they start laying on the guilt and they try to make you feel guilty for requesting to have your needs met right and then now the resentment's building up and now you have the guilt and then they do it again and then you and then you get to the point where you go either one of two ways either you blow up on them and they turn around and tell you to you know f off you're causing so much problem in this relationship and then now they don't want to go out with you or you don't say anything and you stifle it and then that cancer rots in your soul towards this person and then you blow up later and then they're like, well, why didn't you say anything? The whole thing is like passive aggressive abuse. So some of you, I know I'm going off on a tangent here. I don't know who this is for, but some of you are 100% dealing with that where you got, somebody put guilt on you. Somebody put guilt on you and you are feeling guilty for trying to ask to have your needs met in a relationship so you stopped asking and you took their shit you took their abuse because they made you feel like you weren't worthy of having it and if you leave the relationship it's your fault and you're no good and you're never going to have love again some of you got really really messed up because of that and you need to know something guilt is a weapon and you are to rebuke guilt if you feel guilt in a relationship absolutely you need to get rid of that because that person is using they're playing on your weakness this is heavy this is deep but somebody needs to hear it so passive aggressive behavior produces guilt so ask yourself was that person i was with is it my fault or were they were they passive aggressive were they blaming me when it was actually them who was agreeing to do something and then not and then a like, passive aggressive is is hidden hostility this it's, it's people who can't say no so rather than saying straight up no i would not like to do that they will say yes and then find ways to say no and make it your fault for asking do you understand that? I hope you understand that because that's a thing. That's a real thing. Okay. It could even be the same with somebody new you, you meet. And I feel like another part of your strategic move here is to get in that knowledge. Knowledge is power. To get in that knowledge of who you were dealing with or who could be coming down the line because unfortunately you know if you're older you're gonna ha be dealing with people that have a lot of baggage and suffered from a lot of abuse over the years you can't unless unless you're if you're like an older person like 40 and up and you want to date a 20 year old or a 17 year old because they probably aren't going to have much baggage hey that's pretty much unless somebody went through some serious psychological healing and they fix things in their lives and they had therapy and stuff like that um or you just meet someone who actually slid by in their life and didn't have any of that and they're very healthy but you got to be you got to be educated you got to don't be scared but do prepare okay i'm going to see this emperor okay now if you were dealing with an emperor or an empress aries or libra I'm feeling this energy of like somebody has regret for running away from a relationship okay and these are for the past people there's regret for leaving they should have taken the opportunity when it came to them it's not remorse i'm not feeling that I, it feels like regret deep regret like damn because you're gone you some of you like i said 
<laughs> you handed the keys over to the new owner and you left. You left the scene of a crime. You said, that's it. I'm starting over my life. I'm making plans. I'm traveling. I'm seeing what else is out there. Okay, and I'm making room for somebody else. Okay. Just show me this. Show me this Eight of Cups here. Because this, I, somebody's coming back here. The new person that you haven't met yet, that you will, will come in. And then they will pull out, disappear for a bit. And then they're going to come back in. So whether it's past person or new, it's going to be a runner situation. Just don't chase, Virgo. Chase nobody. Unless you're in the Olympics, <laughs> you can chase all you want. If you're going for the gold and you're going to get something at the end of it, chase chase all day if you need to. Chase that baton. Do whatever you got to do. Run if you must. But don't run for nothing. Have a purpose. If you're going to chase after somebody. Okay. Yeah. See, somebody leaves, then they return. Somebody leaves, then they return. So that's kind of what I feel like. But it doesn't matter. Like I said, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. If somebody leaves, let them freaking leave. If they come back, make sure the door's locked and they got to knock. Like they got to know that <laughs> you got to tell them, listen, what's, hey, what's the password before they come in? <laughs> What's the password? <laughs> and don't tell them what the password is. Make them stand out there and guess all the different combinations. Make them do the work. Oh, you're knocking at my door? What's the password? Can't come in. You know, like I used to do that to my little brother when he would try to come in my room. I'd say, he'd knock. Can I come in? I'd say, what? Can I come in? What's the password? <sighs> I'll know the freaking password. Uh... Then you say like the dog's name and say, nope, it's not it. <laughs> oh my God, Virgo. Don't be all, some of you are out there like you get the doorknob and you're like, oh, come on in. Get the fuck out of here. All right, let me see. <laughs> some of you out there leaving your doors unlocked, your windows open. You got flags and balloons outside, the signs that say enter here. Anybody, just come on in. Like, the price is right. Come on down. The price is right. You're just letting people in willy-nilly. <laughs> You're letting exes in. Come back into your life. You're letting new people come in. You're just like, you're like one of those, I don't know, those air one of those things you see at like a tire place, you know, they're, they're, they're air things and they're like going around like this. You're like out of your mind. You're floating all over the place. <laughs> like a dancing queen. Out on the dance floor. Everybody looking at you. You're just attracting leeches, Virgo. You're attracting some leeches. You got to like, I don't know, delete yourself. All right, what's this? Boom, lightning strikes once, maybe twice. Okay. This lightning strike sends a ripple effect into your life. This is a big decision. Like I said, this is a tower moment. Some of you have got like, you're totally breaking ground here. You're doing something completely different. Like I said, you're not just letting this person or letting anybody walk into your life and then out and then just I'm talking about romantic relationships I mean friendships aren't even like that friendships you know we create love we nurture our friendships and our relationships to create bonds with people you know if you've got somebody who is you know not trying to create a, a love with you or create a bond with you and they're just in and out because I don't know it's like a child after school you know it comes home he gets his snack, then he goes out to play, then he comes, you, ever, you know how your mom was like, you're either in or out. <laughs> Remember how your mom was? I, I know my mom was like that. It was like, don't be traping that mud in here. You go out to play, you stay out there until the lights come on. Or you stay out there until it's dinner time. <laughs> you know, obviously in decent weather, you know. Now I'm bringing all these people in and out of the house and everything, or go play out in the backyard. <laughs> Whatever happened to those days? Whatever happened? right? Um, so things may seem like they're in chaos or have been, but this is for the good. 
after every storm comes washing away. Stand firmly on the ground and know that this is all for the best. So whatever choices you're making here, Virgo, going into the month of March, the struggle will be over. I want you to know this decision you're making, you're on the right path. This is a good decision. This big change that you're having in your life here may not feel comfortable because when the tower hits, when that lightning strikes, the house burns down. And you might, like I said yesterday, some of you are like, fine, burn this fucker down. I'll go live on the sidewalk in a box, but at least I'll have peace. So if that's what you got to do, that's what you got to do, right? Because it's more chaotic and crazy to have somebody coming in and out of your life without, you know, that's chaos. That's somebody who's very unstable. You need to know that. You know, that's like, I don't know, me and my analogies, that's like, you know, starting a new job and then showing up for work when you feel like it. You know, what do you think is going to happen? If, if you own a business and you hire somebody, they have like, hey, okay, you're going to work 35, 40 hours a week, right? Here's your schedule. And this person just comes in and out whenever they feel like it. What are you going to do? Just keep making concessions for them? No, you're going to fire their ass and find somebody more stable who wants the job. <laughs> There's people out there that want long-term healthy relationships. And you're messing with this fool. Well, you're not because I feel like you're making changes here. Even anybody new coming into your life. I don't even feel like you guys are given like, you don't have a rule list. You're not handing somebody say, here, sign the contract. Some of you might be. But you're basically like, listen... This isn't baseball. It's not three strikes, you're out. You show up, or we have plans to do something, then you don't show up for the date, or what have you, or you show up and then you disappear. Bye. Bye. Who's got time? Who's got time to lose here? Sounds harsh, I know. But you know what? If you don't like it, there's the door. I mean, Virgo's, you got it in you to stand up for yourselves don't feel guilty someone made you feel guilty for wanting to get your needs met or made you feel bad for wanting love that person needs to get the hell out of your life and i hope you get rid of them hope when you wish upon a star it makes no difference who you are dreams come true your hope faith and wishes are being restored and for a lot of you it's because you're finally taking a stand the reason why a lot of you aren't finding love in your life is because you're not um, having your standards in place because some of you, you meet somebody and then common sense goes right out the door once your feelings get involved. Stop creating soul ties with people until you know what they're about. And what does that mean? That physical intimacy. Stop laying down with people until you know what they're about because if you don't know what they're about and you lay down with them, and then they up and leave you, you're gonna create this soul tie. It's gonna be really, really, really hard to break. Right? Make a wish right now and believe it is yours. So I see a lot of you, especially in the month of March, you're just being more strategic, okay? And you're waiting, you're waiting. What are you waiting for? You're waiting for the right person to come into your life. You're doing you. You're not chasing, but you're not you're not waiting for somebody to come back. You're praying, you know, or you're or you're you're waiting for the right, it's divine timing. So you're not forcing things, which is good. And that's really where you should be. Some of you could be waiting to hear back from somebody, um, but I don't feel like you're gonna be waiting long. Because I feel like some of you are not going to be waiting for someone to define your relationship. I feel like you're going to take upon yourself to define it, right? Because a lot of you get stuck. You got somebody who leaves, then they come back, and they leave, and then you come back. And then you're like, well, what is going on? And what are we? Because I don't understand. You're telling me you love me. And you're, when you're here, everything's great. And then you disappear. And so you're trying to get this person to define. This person cannot define this because they don't even know what they're doing. So you're defining it. You're saying, okay, let me take a look here. Let me step back for a minute. Now they've left again. What is this? This is an unstable, unhealthy relationship. This person is not behaving in a safe, secure way. 
So what is it? It's nothing. Because if you wait for this person to give you an answer about what this is, they could turn around and say, oh, we're in a love relationship. I love you very much. What are you talking about? And then you're like, oh, okay. I wasn't sure. And then they leave. They disappear. They ghost you. They run with somebody else. So they run away. And then you're like confused. Stop that. Define it yourself. Define it yourself. Take, a, take your emotions out of it and take a cold, hard look. Like I said, you hire someone for the job and they're showing up on Mondays and then they're showing up on Thursdays and then they're showing up on days when they're not supposed to work and then they're not showing up on days when they are supposed to work. And what are you going to say to them? Hey, hey, what is this? Can you please tell me what this is so I know? No, you're the fucking boss. You've got to turn around and say, I know exactly what you're doing. You're not showing up for work. You're subordinate. Get out <laughs> and take your fucking severance pay with you. <laughs> Excuse my French. Did you guys know that I curse on my channel? Sometimes I do. Sometimes I do. I got that trailer mouth. What can I say? And I really don't. I'm, when I'm out in public, I'm really very, you know, putting on airs. <laughs> but here on my channel, mm -mm. I had a, I had someone, because um, someone once told me, oh, you curse so much because you're angry. And I asked this lady, she was a tarot reader years ago, and she said, I don't see you as an angry person, I see you as a passionate person. So if I'm cursing out a passion, that's what it is. Okay, hang on to your good friends, Virgo. Connect with your good friends, the ones who support you. That's the Three of Cups here. Hang on to your friendships, the people, your circle of support, your inner circle. Those are the people who care for you. And if you don't have any, get some create some get some good friends you know people who no matter what you do they lift you up all the time no matter what you do no matter what you say they keep lifting you up they don't have anything bad to say about you and these are the friends that say you know what you deserve to be happy you deserve love you're an amazing person come be with us come spend some time with us could be a bunch could be just one friend you know there's a lot of reciprocity a lot of emotional support with with these friends or these people you know they just want the best for you they want you to be happy they may tell you that the person you've been dealing with is a, is a a shit stain and get away but that's you know you got to be the one to make that decision because your friends just want you to be happy that's all and they don't like to see you when you're unhappy you know um, but at the end of the day, Virgo, you have to make the decision what's best for you. You can't let anybody tell you. You can let people advise, but you got to ask yourself, when this person walks away from this relationship, do you, how do you feel? Even if this person stays and then there's a problem and then they run away, do you feel safe? Do you feel secure? Or do you think you feel better out on your own? with less drama because you you have drama right make a choice seven of cups here i'm not going to pull any names today i think we're going to skip that portion but here you need to make a decision stop procrastinating or out over analyzing get clarity on what you desire and move forward too many options and addictions and like I said, codependency, maybe I will pull some dates. Okay. King of Cups here twice. This King of Cups. A situation that is safe is what you need to be seeking here. Okay. Seeking a solid romantic relationship. Key word. Solid. Not Swiss cheese. That's got holes in it. We want a solid brick of love cheese here. Okay. Some of you need to be seeking a counselor or seeing one or to start talking to a counselor or to continue speaking with a counselor to help you. Because some of you have the codependency yourself. You probably didn't have it when you met um, this runner or this person. And it probably came about or developed after being in this relationship with a, with a person. Also seeking a counselor or talking to someone as a preventative measure so that you don't get into the similar relationships again. Because I know some of you are like, how come I keep getting these same types of people? It's not, it's all about you. 
because you're making the choice. And I always say, you know, it's it's not so much who keeps coming into your life. It's more about who you keep holding on to. That's really what you need to look at. Stop looking at why these people keep coming in. You pass millions of people all week throughout your day, whether it's online or whether it's out in the real world. You see people all the time. But the ones that come into your life, all kinds of people are going to come in. The question is not about who they are that's coming in. The question is, who am I holding on to? Why do I do you, the reason why you keep having these same relationships is because is because you keep holding on to the same type of energy. These types of people, right? Ask that question because that's about you. There's something in you that you're either replaying from your childhood that you're trying to you have unfinished business with someone from your childhood that you're trying to finish with a, a current relationship okay but that person is not that person you just recognize them as being a replica of what you uh, the some type of tra traumatic relationship you had in the past and so this new person or this person you've been in this relationship with you're trying to finish that past business with them and it's not working you gotta you gotta heal that within yourself and that's really just a matter of acceptance and saying well that's the way it went these are the cards that i was dealt everybody's dealt a different hand like i said keep your keep your cards close to your heart and take a look at them yourself and figure out what you need to shift what you need to let go of and what what you need to lay down on the table and finish the game Yeah, you have the lovers embrace true love and deep intimate friendships make choices from the heart not from the unhealed heart make choices from the healed heart vibrant health or recovery from an illness beautiful okay there's your two of swords again some of you are unable or unwilling to make a decision right now that's fine like i said you have the hand of cards you're strategizing right now some of you are just trying to figure out what your next move is and you're just kind of putting all your ducks in a row right now but you're not popping them off yet you're not sure which you what you want to do yet you're, you're standing at the crossroads and you're assessing the different paths but you haven't some of you have not started walking yet and you will when you're ready follow your own heart rather than trying to make other people happy virgo don't pretend there is no problem and don't overanalyze a situation just see it for what it is if it acts like a duck if it quacks like a duck if it walks like a duck it's a duck point blank period Let's not look at why it quacks like a duck, why it walks like a duck, why it talks like a duck. <laughs> it's just a duck. Let it be a duck, right? It's just a duck. That's it. It does all those things because that's what a duck does and that's that. <laughs> and this is coming from a Virgo. Trust me when I tell you. You save yourself a lot of time when you're not overanalyzing things. Just because you can doesn't mean you should, Virgo. A temporary pause for reflection and insight and awakening where you are seeing things in a whole new light. That's coming for you. Embrace your own uniqueness and do a little bit of work. Do a little bit of charity. I feel like if you don't do any charity work, um, that would be very helpful to you for some reason, doing some charity work. All right, let's get your charms. All right, you know what they just said? I'm gonna give it to you anyway. I'm gonna give it to you anyway. But it's gonna be short and sweet. Okay, we have the letter C, the letter G, H, R, and P. We also have a K and a G, okay? Um, we have the number 27. Somebody was born in the year of the rat. I'm hearing also the year of the goat oh 
hold on. And the year of the snake. Okay. Well, all right, we're putting these back because Mama Virgo didn't shuffle enough. Again with these damn cats. Siamese kitty. Wait, is that a cat? What the hell is that? I guess, yeah, it is a cat. Siamese cat, but that's a striped cat. Maybe somebody has a striped cat, striped. Or maybe got a little strip. Know what I mean? Um, we also have a honeybee. Very beautiful. And a key with a diamond on it. Okay, I don't know if somebody has a key with a diamond on it. Or a diamond, is that a diamond cut? Something, they're giving me the words diamond cut. Maybe you're getting a key made. Or diamond cut. Di like diamond jewel jewel of some sort um, you might be seeing a bee I saw um, a ladybug yesterday in my house I was so happy oh oh sorry y'all that wasn't meant to be I have a lot of charms. Keep getting trapped in my... What's this? Oh, okay. Oh, they just said, down by the seashore. I'm hearing down by the seashore. Because they're giving me these colors. Tan, like a beach sandy color. Light blue. Dark blue. I'm seeing like... It's a pixelated um, picture of a beach. It's very pixelated. You know, it's got this the beach, the sand, and then the water. Very pixelated. It's very strange. Wow. Now we have a star, like a starfish. Like a star. Something with, uh, somebody's getting a house um like a beach house bringing their kitty a lot of it feels like a very warm summertime or you have a beach house somewhere um you go to in the summer or you're winning one maybe you're gonna get one <laughs> you win one in like a sweepstakes lottery or something okay and we have an owl the wise old owl and a bird. Okay, so, hmm. Wisdom. And this bird feels like a messenger. So some of you are getting some type of messages, um, like, you're, like downloads, some spiritual downloads of wisdom. Something's hitting you, or has been hitting you, or something in your dreams. You're getting these dream messages, you're dreaming of owls or, or, or bees or stars or keys or cats or birds. Um, these very symbolic dreams. I don't know if you've been writing them down or if you've been looking them up. Uh, quite frankly, I've been having dreams of tornadoes. Believe it or not. I am, I have to like, I feel like I need a psychiatrist. I keep having dreams of tornadoes and I, I was trying to read and there's so many different readings. Our meanings for that but the tornadoes I mean I'm my tornado dreams I'm not running away from them I'm saving everybody from them <laughs> I'm like going around in the house or in the town telling there's a tornado coming and I'm grabbing the babies and I'm grabbing the dogs and I'm I'm like trying to wake everybody up <laughs> wake up will you so we have a, a strawberry here maybe you're eating strawberries you love strawberries and then oh this is a black cloud so if you feel like you've got like a black cloud hanging over you, maybe relationships or in regard to whatever you're going through, just know the clouds will be clearing very soon. Okay. Um, I think the best thing to do if you feel like that is what's happening in your life, like you have a black cloud over you, I feel like the best thing for you to do instead of like, 
feeling bad about that, just kind of look up at that black cloud and say, hey, what's up? I see you. You ain't going to be here for long, but I'm just letting you know what's up. You know what I mean? Like acknowledge it, accept it, and that's when it goes away. That's how the healing happens. Once we acknowledge and accept something, we're able to let it go. Okay? If you're not healing, it's because you have not acknowledged a situation and you have not accepted it. Right? It's all part of the um, grief process. And there's like an actual process. Um, I think there's like bargaining, there's acceptance, there's shock and denial. Um, I forget Keebler Ross or Kubler Ross, I forget what it's called, but it's the five stages of grief. So if you've gone through a breakup or you're going through some kind of situation, um, look that up and recognize and acknowledge which stage you're in and just know that you can vacillate between in and out of those different stages at different times. But once you come to a place of acceptance where you're no longer fighting, you're no longer acknowledging, you're at peace and you let it go, that's when your healing begins. And that's when your healing is finished. That's when you are able to start your life over, right? And you have fresh new hope, not false hope, new hope. All right, so I'm going to leave your messages there, Virgo. I hope that that resonated in some way. It was kind of a spiritual, psychological reading today um, and a little bit of sass. But you know how we do here. So do go over to the Oversoul Forum. And some people have posted some topics there, so do get involved. I would greatly appreciate it. Um, I might post a couple there very soon. Um, I have some things I have to say. <laughs> so, yeah, um, and that's it. Definitely hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so yet, if you enjoy these readings. And again, don't forget, the end of the month, the 28th is the last day to get your $50 or $50 off on a personal phone reading. And I'm going to start opening up emergency call readings because a lot of you are reaching out to me over the weekends and stuff. And you want to have like an emergency reading done and I don't have anything set up. So um, like where you need it right now, like waking me up at two o'clock in the morning wanting to talk. I'm going to try to make that available. I just have to figure out how I'm going to do it. But just to let you know. All right, you guys, that's it. Have a wonderful evening, day, and I will see you all hopefully tomorrow, if not the following day. Love you. Bye.